Welcome to Pastor's Perspective. Of course, I'll be your host. I'm Dr. Ken, and you're watching the Marketplace Network. I'm so excited to be with you today, and I just wanted to jump on real quick to encourage you. It's just a 10-minute thought I have for you of how pastors actually think of what they're doing, why they're doing it, and what, what this means for you. So I've invited one of our own programmers today to get into their mind of why we do the things that we do. Why do we want to present the things of God? How, what's the right way to go? How to get through some of the things? Let me give you an example. Romans 14, 12 through 13 in God's Word edition says, so let's stop criticizing each other. Can I get an amen? Amen. Instead, let, we should decide never do anything that would make Christians doubt or lose their faith. So what I'm saying is, let's start uniting. Let's start building each other up. Let's start encouraging each other. I don't care what religion you're from. As long as you know Jesus Christ is Lord, we confess our sins to him. He died for our sins, and he is our leader. Pretty much, we can talk about the other things. But until then, let's get that down first. And let's start bringing the lost in. So I want to get right to the point and bring Pastor in. But first, Ephesians 6, 8 says, what happens to others will happen for us. So this is part of why I want to do this section today, why I asked Pastor Tim to come. He's a uh, speaker, lecturer, uh, he's an author, he's got a book out, we'll get into that in a minute, and he's got his own TV program that he's been doing for a long time, but Pastor, where can they see you, how can they see you besides the book? Your program is where now? Well, you can find me on the Marketplace Network, go down to, scroll down to Pastoring God's Sheep. Uh, we are on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Getter, Truth Social, Rumble, and Amazon Fire TV. Amen. Now, why is this so important? Why would you want Pastor Tim to speak at your church? Let me tell you why. If you're stagnant, if there's, you've only had a certain amount of members for a long time, or th this is what I find most churches now. When I was out preaching, 10, 15 years ago, it was a different story. But, but nowadays, uh, because of the times we're in and we're getting short in the days that we live in, hear me, a lot of the churches are starting to get barren. And I think it'll go to house churches, but that's another story. But we should still gather with the saints. Hear me. A lot of the saints are ministering to each other. Sometimes the pastor opens up the pulpit, but guess what happens? Everybody knows the word. Everybody's teaching each other, but you're all saved. Who's going out and getting the loss? Who's bringing them in? So wouldn't it be good if you had a TV personality, somebody that's a real father figure, somebody that's already wrote a book on what at least not to do for 60 years. May I mention the book real quick while I'm talking about it? It's My Journey to Glory. It's a short read look. It will take you an hour, hour and a half. It's not the end all book and what to do on every situation, but it'll give you some real keys on what not to do and what Pastor Tim struggled with 60 years, 60. Let me give you a thought real quickly why he wrote the book and I'll turn it over to him in his own words. Isaiah 4, 54, 2, we are commanded, this is the king, Jesus telling us, uh, extend our tent pegs, in other words, our, uh, our dwelling place of ministry so that others can come underneath and rest. So we can create a dwelling place of his presence under the same tent, roof, whatever you want to call it, for our lives so we're under and we can rest. So what Pastor Tim's trying to do, he doesn't have a church. He feels like the church is all over the world. He doesn't want to be limited. He wants to go out and meet the people, touch the people, speak to the people, see the people. So that way people will understand what he went through so they won't have to go through how far he did it. Pastor, give us some thoughts how why you started doing the ministry after, why after 60 years did you turn? Well, I've had a compassion for people since I was a child. I never understood where the compassion came from. Amen. But even through the multitude of things that I've been through in my life, I never seem to have lost the compa that compassion. 
I've just recently, in the last seven years, since I've actually come to know the Lord and have Christ in my life as my Lord and Savior, I have found out that the compassion comes from the heart of God, from the heart of the Father. So give us that scripture you gave us off camera that to encourage us what that was. That was a great little teaching. Give us a little bit of that while we've only got a few minutes. Is it 1 Corinthians? <coughs> Sorry, Bill. 1 Corinthians 4.15 10,000 teachers to guide you, yet few fathers. What this means simply is that teachers can teach you many things, but only a father can guide you through them. Now, I've been through, like I said, a multitude of sins, a multitude of things that have happened to me, loss of loved ones. I spent pretty much all my life in the alternative lifestyle. These are things that I can guide you out of or away from if you haven't gotten into them yet. So what is he saying? Hear me. Many teachers, we see it at churches, they're so good, they're so gifted at speaking, but how many <coughs> are walking through it? So the real father, the perfect father, will be the one with the father, whether it's your natural father, heavenly father. Even though we have a natural father, I didn't have one. Pastor Tim had one, but he found out he was adopted. It's in the book, if I didn't show you the book already. Here's my point, is this is very, very important. Our Heavenly Father is only the perfect Father. But if you will choose to allow Pastor Tim through watching his programs or reading his book, that I show you the book, by reading the book, it will show you the things, the shortcomings, the enemy and the pitfalls he wants to have. He ran for 60 years. Pastor doesn't want you to wait six minutes, let alone 60 years, to go through what he had to go through. Here's what I'm offering. I'm asking you to have him come into your church and help others into suicide, which he's an expert in. He tried to commit suicide many times. Second thing is very important, the ultimate lifestyle. He thought, oh, I'm in love. It's okay. No, it's not. I was born gay. No, you're not. There's so many things that he can help you with this in the situation. There's so many things that people have already started to help. He's helped others get out of that lifestyle, but more importantly, father them by walking them through. Of course, he can quote the Bible lessons and all that, and that's what we should. We should understand Jesus so we can walk like Jesus and be like Jesus. But as an example, he'll be an example to you walking like Jesus as he's teaching you through the Bible. How do you do that? You can do it online. You can do it. You can email him. It's right there on the screen. You get, his phone number is right there. You can call him anytime. You can read his book. But I'm asking you to do this to help him. It takes money. The media is very, very expensive. The books are really a lot of money and a lot of time. Why is he doing this? He's doing it for you. He's doing it to help you get out of these lifestyles. He's doing this for you. Suicide's so popular. That's just the wimpy way to get out. Why check out? You have a calling. God would make you. He does not make mistakes. So right here in 1 Corinthians 15, 38 says, A seed sow grows into a plant, part of the process of determining what it's worth and its value. So I want to show you what, how valuable Pastor Tim's seed is. He's a hundredfold, and I'll show you this to you. If you'll sow the widow's might, his book is what? 10, 12, whatever dollars it is. You can get anywhere, Barnes and Normals, Amazon, wherever that is, books are sold. Anywhere around the world, you can get it. Now, hear me. It's important you do that. Sow the seed. Now, why should you do that? In the Bible, remember, David uh, was getting a lot of victories in uh, God's telling him to go out and conquer other lands to turn them around to Christ. So as he brings back the spoils, somebody else came in and stole everything in his camp. So what did he do? 
the men were about ready to stone him, blame him for everything. He, go, he went right to God, as we always should. Any problem we have, we go to him and let the Father tell us what to do. That's what Pastor Tim does. He points you to the Father of what to do the right way. Now, don't you think in the good book that we have, the Bible, praise God for it, if he says, just do this, this will happen, just do this, it always is not like that. In fact, hardly ever it is. Why? He's made us individually. Why? So he can communicate because he's an all-powerful God. He just doesn't do one thing one way. He does 5,000 ways or however millions of ways he can do it that we can't even fathom. So since we're all different, how can we tell each other, no, this is the right, but we can help give an idea to at least start you on the road. That's what Pastor does. Here's just the thought. Let me show you what the book says. Let's decide together how you can get out of this problem. You hear what I'm saying? So sow the seed. This will help him go out to different areas, help him go to more churches that can't afford them. He doesn't have a set price, don't get me wrong. The book will help him stay on the air or uh, be like David's men. 200 stayed in camp, he went back and collected everything they stole from him and brought it back. And they split the spoil equally. So what I'm saying is sometimes we have to send out our ministers, our apostles, our teachers, our prophets, are you going to go to Africa? Are you going to go around the world? Are you going to go out to all these different places? That might not be your calling. That might not be what you want to do. But what you can do is to support him for him to go. You get the same reward. That's what the Bible says. I mean, how easy is that? And plus, you get all the benefits, the shows, all the teaching. You can learn more, be more like Jesus. You can help your next door neighbor. You can help your family. You can help the people in your business, the places you work at, and so on and so forth. Let me close with this one last thought. And I'll get past the last thought. Isaiah 10, 27 says, defining the anointing. Now, what is the anointing? It's the burden yoke. Remember, it's that wooden thing they put on cows or bulls or whatever back in those days that they uh, tilled the land with. Sometimes there's two, sometimes there's just one. But it was to keep them straight on path. Sometimes, most of the time, it was two at the front. What well, That's really you and Jesus, but you want to put it all on him. Because he, he can bear the burden. His burden is like He gives you his burden, which is light which is him, which is all knowing, all. So what we have to do is the anointing, the power of God is simply this. The anointing is literally God on flesh doing what flesh can't do. In other words, you put in your request. You know it's God's will because he's a hundredfold seed. He's doing the gospel. He's speaking the word. He's praying for the sick. He's praying and get, praying for people to get delivered. He's teaching the word. Don't you think that's what God wants to do? That's what he commands us to do. So if you sow the seed, you'll get, I mean, if you're tithing, the Bible says, that means you give 10% and he'll protect your 90%. You won't run through your money. But if you give an offering, that's where the money's at. One seed might be whatever a seed is. I don't know what a seed could be a million dollars. It could be $10. The widow's money is 10 nowadays. But what I'm getting at is this. If you can sow a seed to pass to the middles, uh, the uh, widow's might, or this businessman, you know, I hear this all the time. The businessman says, oh, you know, if I just had one more million dollars, I could complete this construction problem. I could buy this uh, center that I have. Well, how much you got? A hundred. Have you thought about sowing the seed? Hear me. That doesn't mean sow everything where your family's struggling. I'm not talking about that. But you don't have 900,000. What's the difference? Sow in something that's worth something eternally that nobody can steal. Give it to God. Don't give it to Pastor Tim. Send it to Pastor Tim to God. God doesn't need the money. Guess who he gives it to? Him. Why? Because he's doing the work of the Lord. So if you can catch that, this is a revelation that's going to change your life. You sow that seed, you watch how you're going to get those building, that construction permit. Watch what's going to happen. For the rest of us, maybe that's too much money. Maybe we can only do 50. But if you'll do it monthly, hear me. Watch what will happen. God loves a cheerful and faithful giving. If you'll give faithfully that thing that you've been waiting for, I'm not talking about 
you know, a, 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 par, a, a house on the beach that you can't afford. Now, stop it. I'm not talking about a Ferrari. You couldn't afford the gas. What I'm talking about, a need, a real need, a, a new car to help your children along because you can't fix the one you have. I'm talking about a safe place to live that you couldn't have before, uh, the electricity and all that before that's included. I'm talking about real needs that God will provide, but you have to plant the seed. If you do not plant the seed, there is no harvest. So, uh, pastor's great soil. I'm going to give him the last thought. Pastor, could you close us out in prayer as we close in this chapter? Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, I lift my children's father to you. Make him a man yes. worthy of his high calling of fatherhood. Gently lead him in the ways of integrity and righteousness so that his children may see him as an example worth following. Do not let him exasperate his children. Instead, remind him often that they are looking to him for guidance and instruction. Father, I pray my children will be left with a rich spiritual inheritance by the man they call dad. Help him be perceptive in his ob observances of what you require. Then may he have the courage to carry Sorry, I lost my spot. <laughs> Require that he may, then may he have the courage to carry out your call upon his life. May he walk. One second. Well, let's just close it up there. We got to close. Amen. Here, let's do this. You can see the rest of the prayer on his next program. He's going to say it entirely. I think it's a powerful prayer. Uh, I forgot who it was written by, but I want to start the subscribing right now. Subscribe, share, like. Start sending it out to all his friends. That's what you can do for pastor. Second thing, you can sell and buy the book. It's $12. Is that going to change your life? No, but it will change your life if you read it. And I want you to give it, as soon as you read it, give it to somebody else and give it to somebody else. Play it forward. And last thing, sow in this program every day, even every week, every month. Whatever it is, if you can give ten dollars a month, a hundred, you know, a hundred thousand, whatever it is, whatever the seed has for you, be faithful. Do it to the end of the year and watch what God will do for you. Until next time, the great Pastor Tim. I'm Dr. Ken. I'll see you next time on Pastor's Perspective.